I'm very glad to be here today to talk about some of the last innovations that we are trying to pursue in the University of Girona about underwater robotics. Before starting my talk, I would like to say that we are not among the first to work in, in underwater technology. So actually about 150 years ago, uh, Narcisse Monturiol was one of the great pioneers in this uh, submarine technology when he was able to successfully design, implement, and test the Ictinero submarine in the harbor of Barcelona. So in the computer vision and robotics research team in the University of Girona, we share his view about the underwater technology. We also share his passion about the underwater world. So during the last 15 years, we have been working, designing, and developing uh, underwater robots for subsea uh, operation. So today I'm going to talk about one of our last creations, which is the Girona 500 robot. So before going into the details, I'd like to try to explain you why we think this technology is important. So if you take a look to the world map, you quickly realize how important are the oceans for our everyday life. So actually they cover the 70% of the Earth's surface, and they are a primary source for food, for natural resources, and also for energy, and actually they hide an important part of our historical heritage in wrecks and uh, prehistorical sites which are submerged down to the water. But exploring the deep sea is not easy. It's very difficult, especially because as humans we are not, we are not adapted to, to moving in this medium which is very hostile for us. So if you want to do subsea exploration, especially beyond the first few meters of the water column, you have to rely on using technology. So you have to use submarines, managed submarines, or you have to use underwater robots. And for sure it's much more safe if you use robots because you don't have to be down there, which is a difficult area. So if, if you want to work with robots, there are two main categories of robots that you can use. You have teleoperated robots, which actually are robots which are connected to a surface ship by means of a long umbilical cable that we use to pass power, to pass communications. And down there, there is a robot with thrusters, sensors, cameras, sonars, a lot of things with some robotic arms so we can do some work. But there is a problem. And the problem is that cable is long, so you have to move the robot nearby where the cable is. Imagine you have 1,000 meters of cable, 2,000 meters of cable. That's very difficult. So if you want to do exploration, it's better if you use autonomous robots. So autonomous robots basically are vehicles that you bring in the ship. You just launch them. You pre-program them to do some trajectory, and what they do is they dive, they go to the ocean, then they follow a trajectory, and they gather some data with sensors that can be, for instance, imagery. Actually, it's not so different about what we do when we dive. So if you like to dive, normally what you do is you just go there, you dive, you reach the seafloor, and probably you will use a nice camera to snap amazing pictures of the underwater world. And this is exactly what we are doing with our underwater vehicles. This is Girona 500 during a survey. So actually what we do is we program the robot, send the robot, and the robot is going to swim around nearby to the seafloor by taking pictures. And what is the outcome of that? The outcome of that is a visual map. So for instance, what you see here, this is a visual map of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. In this case, it was gathered with a robot from Ephremer in France, not from one of our robots. It takes about 23,000 images there, which are stitched all them together by using some image processing algorithms developed in our lab. And this is actually some sort of uh, Google Maps. You are very used to, to use with a Google Maps, so you know you can use it to look for some information. When we build these maps, then what you can do is provide this map to a biologist, and they can look for information which is of interest from them. For here, for instance, you can see some mussels, some crabs that are uh, lying about 1,700 meters in, in, down into the ocean. Or you can just look what, what we do with Google Maps. Normally, you just satisfy your curiosity, so you go to an old place and you just look, thumb into, thumb into again to look for more solution paper and go again. And then you can discover strange objects sometimes which are lying just in the ocean. Because, for instance, this is just a toilet, which is really surprising to have something like this at 1,700 meters down into the ocean. But anyway, what, what really matters is that with IUVs, what you do is you survey, you look for information, you build maps. But there is a bunch of applications where you cannot just do that. If you want to do maintenance to submerge infrastructures like what you have in permanent observatories down to the water or, or some of the 
of the infrastructures that the old uh, industry use, then you need to act, you need to modify things, you need arms for doing that. So nowadays, or you use a diver, which is extremely difficult, or you just go with an aerobic, with, with a teleoperator robot. It means you go there, you have the ship, you have the cables, you have all this mess, and it's extremely expensive because you need this huge and expensive, uh, and expensive uh, vessel. So the thing is, could it be possible to have a third category of robots? Can we endow an autonomous robot with a robotic arm and try to do some of this manipulation autonomously without a person guiding the robot, just autonomously? And this is what we are trying to do in our research team. So about three years ago, we tried to face this challenge. And we decided to build one robot that's called Girona 500. 500 came because this is the depth that the vehicle is rated for. This vehicle weighs about 140 kilos. It's uh, powered with several computers. It has sensors. It has cameras. It has sonars. And it has a very interesting part, which is down there in the bottom hole, in the forward part of the bottom hole, which is what we call the payload area. So it means if you have a mission you want to do down there, and you have the sensor you want to bring there, we can just put it there and bring a robot to get uh, your mission done. And for this payload area, we have developed several solutions. We have sonars for doing elevation maps of the seafloor, we have cameras, and we have the arm, which is the clear innovation in this project. So the thing is that we came up with the this system that has the arm, and then we need to prove the concept. We have to prove that we can do some manipulations. So we decide to do some object search and recovery uh, experiments. So the idea is imagine there is an object. You don't know exactly what it is, and you need to look for it and then to recover this object. In this case, the object is a mock-up of a black box, which is not actually black, it is orange. This is one of the mysteries of the technology. But the thing is that what we, we do is we program the robot, the robot goes there, and it starts doing a grid pattern. So it's just, just observing the seafloor. This is a, what you are seeing now in the slide. This is a, our swimming pool in the lab. We are very lucky we have a swimming pool in the lab. And then the robot, what it's doing is just flying. It's swimming over the, over the seafloor. What is down there, this is a poster. This is actually a, a digital image of a real seafloor. So the robot is gathering image, as you can see, about there, this is what is gathering, and it's building a map. Okay? So at the end, what we get is a map like this. And once we have the map, we bring the map to the user, and the user says, OK, that's the object I want to recover. And next thing we have to do is we have to be able to go there and to recover this object. So now the position of the object is known. The robot is autonomous. You have to trust me because there is a cable. But the cable, believe me, is only to supervise what the robot is doing because we don't have Wi-Fi on the water. So we need to get connected through a cable to see that the computers are doing what we expect. So the robot goes there, it knows the position of the object, and now it just finds the object, tries to keep the position of the robot with respect to the object, and deploys the arm. You need very accurate system to do that. The handle of the box is about three centimeters, and you cannot fail. So the idea is that the robot is there, deploys the arm, use the cameras to identify the object, and successfully is able to hook this object and to come back. But this is a bit uh, not easy, it's difficult, believe me, but um, it's not as difficult as in reality. So we decided to go a bit further. So let's go to a harbor and test if this is working in real conditions. So this is the vehicle, that's this October. So it's pretty recent, this video. The vehicle is deploying to the water. Now it's not possible to show you a nice video where the robot doing all the trajectory. There is not any point of view in the harbor where you can take this video because visibility is so slow there. So if you want to, to see what the robot is doing, then what you need to do is to use graphical tools to reproduce offline what the robot actually did. And this is what you are seeing now in the video. So the robot is doing a survey. And you can appreciate the quality of the images that the robot is snapping, which are not bad. So you have seen now the black box, which is orange, as I said. And after that, it's going to stitch all these images together. And now this is the outcome. This is the visual map. There is the target. We select the target, and we send the robot back to find the target. The robot goes there. You see the visibility is low. This is the harbor of Rosas, so it's not so far, but visibility is not very good. Now the robot is tracking the object. And it will localize with respect to the object. It will try to put the object in the middle of the image. And now, once it has the object in the middle of the image, 
again, is going to cook the object. So you can see the divers around there. They are doing this nice video for us so we can sell the product. And now it will successfully cook, hopefully. Now it will do because it's a video. OK, and, in, and here it's done. So now we have the technology. We have the capability to go there, do a survey, and then go back, go back, and do some manipulation on the objects. So if we want, we could go back to the toilet and clean it. That could be possible. OK? There is only a difference. That was 1,700 meters, and this is only rated for 500. So there is a problem there. But anyway, the technology is working. But now, let me finalize my talk, but just dream him a bit. OK? This is not something we have done. This is something we will dream to do. When you do manipulation, actually, as persons, we cannot do everything. You cannot just handle a big table. You need to cooperate. OK? So we will really love to see robots cooperating down the water. Imagine you want to mount, you want to assemble an underwater structure. You cannot do that with a robot. Even if you do a big robot, you cannot do that. But if you have several of them, they can move around, they can mop the environment, they can identify the objects and just do a scan of each one of the objects, trying to recover the 3D, try to identify what are these objects for. And at some point, they will have a map, a 3D map of the environment, and there is a big problem underwater, is that because we don't have Wi-Fi, most of our communication is very, very slow. Actually, you can only send a few bytes every three or four seconds, which is almost nothing. Okay? So if you want to communicate, you have to do this. You have to do a rendezvous, make the robots to, go, to keep together, get connected, interconnect the information, share the information, build a global map of the area, and plan what to do next. So the idea is if you can make them to bring together and get this global map, the idea is we want them to cooperate next to be able to do cooperative transportation of weights, bring all the pieces together. And what I really love more of this, uh, of this concept is that as persons, we have two arms. It's very difficult to put two arms in just one robot of this dimension because it's very small. But if you have the capability to bring them together, if you can make them to rendezvous, if you can connect them, then you have a biggest robot with two arms. And then you can face very huge and very challenging manipulation tasks, just as we do as persons, try to assemble objects under the water with two arms, which has never been done under the water. So this is actually our dream, which is cooperation under water. But I have to say that this thing work I'm showing you under water is not possible if you no, don't do teamwork at the human level, which is really the key for success. So I'd like to end my talk with this picture of the Trident project, which is the project that has bring all these results here to the University of Girona. Thank you very much.